Okay, here's our house today. It's a tri-level, split level. 25, 3,000 square foot. Notice some cracking on the outside. The bricks cracked. Now, this crack actually goes through the brick of the mortar, which means it happened fast. A slow settle, slower settlement will actually just crack the mortar. So, let's look at the grade. Grade is decent. It's not back pitched. And then these downspout these gutter downspouts are always the suspect. So there's our pop-up. That's actually where the water evacuates. It goes underground. There's a spring out of that cap. Enough hydrostatic pressure pushes it up. So that looks good. That could have been after, added after the fact. They may have known they had a problem and added that. If we go to the backyard, the other side, we've got some more cracks. These are more significant, but uh, brick and mortar, so that means it happened fast. And same thing. Cracks are usually more common around a window since it's a hole in the wall it's kind of a weak point. So that's a little back pitch. Same thing they've put the gutter underground that's good. These are always culprits. The trees that's a big one. That's probably 30 or 40 years old. That one's 20. Let's go inside the house. This is the same wall from the inside. Just want to make sure it uh, actually see if it's showing up from both sides and it is there's a pyramid crack stair steps down but the point is is it shows from both sides which is which is significant movement so this one when I flood tested it with a hose I actually got a little bit of water to come inside so it did fail a flood test can also see it's not done moving. Did you see the paint? They had painted over the crack at one time and the paint had cracked out. So this one's still moving. Same wall from the outside. Another stair step. It's concrete block, not concrete. You know, solid concrete, which isn't as strong, but still should we be able to withstand this. Okay, let's go to the other side of the house. So this settling showing on all sides of the house. Can't see where the drywall is, but uh, we're still subgrade here. This one's not as bad. If we go inside the house, we actually find another problem, which is that everything slopes to the center of the house. That wall right there that the ball's about to hit, that's the center of the house. If we go upstairs, we're going to test these floors and see if the upper floor mimics the lower. Okay, that room failed. Comes back to the center of the house. The room across. Give it the same test. This is a golf ball, by the way. Golf ball is what I like to use because it's actually got quite a bit of friction. If uh, the slope could overcome the dimples in the ball, it's significant. Um, this is an outer wall here, so if my theory is correct, this will go left toward the center of the house. And it does. Same thing on this room. Everything goes to the center. So what's going on here is we've got settling the outside a foundation issue, but on the inside we've got overspanned floor joists. Um, it's always possible some of them are damaged and cracked, but I can't see because of the drywall. Let's go in the crawl space and just double check the floor joist. What happens here sometimes to, oh yeah, this is a fun one to get in, look at me, like a gymnast, not even close, but I feel like I am. Uh, sometimes what happens here too is since this is only a two-story house on one side of the house, that's usually more stress load on the floor joist because it's supporting two floors. So off the top, I see some high water marks. So I can see water's been down here, and 
and there's the high water marks on the foundation wall. They put in a sump pump. So this could have been a water issue that caused the settling and then they've added the sump pump. So I could be seeing an old problem. So let's test the sump pump. It works, but it's filling back up and it's not groundwater. What's going on here is uh, they didn't put a backflow preventer. So everything that pumps out runs back to the bucket and fills it back up as soon as the pump shuts off. So it's redundant. You gotta have a backflow preventer. I'm just glad to see a pump. The backflow preventer's pretty easy at this point. Happen to notice this wise under there, they've uh, got some cast iron pipe updated to some PVC and it's a little back pitched. They've used the old cast iron to support the new line. Let me show you what happens to these cast iron waistlines. They kind of start to corrode from the inside. Look at this one. I'd say this one's probably 30% blockage. That's why they cut it off. And that's not even tree roots. That's just deterioration. Rust and scaling. As that metal deteriorates, it expands. So eventually cast iron kind of reaches the point where you have to update it. Here's the updated line. And I just happen to notice it's back pitched. At least I think it's back pitched. Here's a crude test. See which way the flashlight rolls. It rolled to the left. Supposed to roll to the right, so it's a little back pitched, but this pipe would actually have to be six inches back pitched to be perfectly um, to actually create a problem. But either way, I'll write it up. Here's the main water line that comes in. This is galvanized. I've found these before where I've poked right here and actually poked through and uh, created a leak. Eventually, those galvanized water lines underground need to be replaced. They'll rupture. Alright, let's get out of here. Let's go check one more thing. Let's go check the attic. Sometimes, if you've got a house sagging in the center, you can rack it up to attic bracing or damaged rafters. So let's go up in the attic. Okay just happen to notice a bath fan. That's just a humidity fan from the bathroom. There's no mildew on the decking here, so that's not an issue. So I'm looking for cracked rafters, over bracing, improper bracing, because it's, it's always suspect if you've got bracing like this in the center of the house. It's pushing all the way down and deflecting the floor joists. But, uh, and even though the camera makes these look distorted, they're straight. So, straight rafters, decent bracing. So, this isn't our problem. We'll check one more thing. Let's check in the attic over the second floor, which had the most slope. Here it is. So this is over the bedrooms where the golf ball went to the center of the house every time. No cracks, no bows, no dips. Looks pretty good, and the bracing isn't just on ceiling joists or the uh, you know the center center span of the upper hallway. They've actually put kind of a T brace down and, and braced off of it, so it spreads the it distributes the weight evenly. This is fine. There's a little bit of insulation on that flue, but it's fiberglass. Fiberglass doesn't burn. All right. So what we've got this house is it's not a roof problem. It's not an attic problem. Looked like it was a ground problem. Water on the outside perimeter saturated the foundation, caused it to settle. Looks like they've added soil now and put the gutter downspouts underground but we've still got the cracks and the cracks are what's allowing water to come inside. Um, at this point if the settling's fixed, if it's no longer settling, you can seal the cracks. But this one will require a few
braces, a few jacks. So we've got a few thousand dollars in repairs to get this foundation stabilized where it needs to be. Other than that, good house. Subscribe to our channel and we'll keep you in the loop.